Hi, it's Ori Krug, and welcome back to Mind Your Body. I'm so excited to share today's episode with you. I just had an awesome conversation with Candy Lowe, who is a board-certified movement therapist, dance movement therapist, who works with children and adults with cancer. And I just love how much we talked about play and connection and community and how important that was for her cancer patients. And this is also something that I talk about in my free Wired for Love training for anyone who has had experienced trauma in the past and you're still carrying that trauma with you and bringing it into your relationships. Um, this training is free. It's a three video part series that helps you understand what exactly is going to help you access and heal from your trauma in a way that lasts, in a way where you can leave the past in the past and have the most deeply connected and fulfilling romantic relationships. And yes, play is one of those huge important things. So if you do want to sign up for that free training, you can find it at wiredforlovetherapy.com and just sign up there and you'll get the training to your inbox. I'll also paste that link into the episode notes. And until then, let's get started with today's podcast. This is Mind Your Body, a dance movement therapy perspective on the integration of our emotional, cognitive, physical, and spiritual aspects of our being into one more aware and whole existence. One. All right. So we have Candy Lowe here today, and welcome. So excited to have you here on the podcast. This has been um, in the making for maybe a year or so at this point. So um, really happy to have you here, and I'd love it if you could introduce yourself. Thank you. Uh, thank you for having me here, actually. So my name is Candy Lowe, uh, Lowe is my last name, and I'm a board-certified dance movement therapist, a registered drama therapist, and a certified child life specialist. I am uh, originally from Hong Kong, but I also lived in Belgium and the UK, and recently relocated to the States. And uh, I'm also the president of Hong Kong Dance Movement Therapy Association and Hong Kong Child Life Association. Awesome. Wow, you've been a lot of different places. <laughs> yeah, I've been very yeah. fortunate that way. <laughs> yeah. So how long, so have you been working with in child life this through all the different places you've been at or um, can you tell us a little bit about how long you've been doing that for? Yeah, so um, mainly for in terms of child life and dance movement therapy or drama therapy, I worked in the States and in Hong Kong. Um, all the other time in Belgium or in London, where uh, I was pursuing for my uh, musical theater training. Uh, so that was my kind of like past life before I became a dance therapist. Yeah, nice. Um, so we are going to talk about child life and specific, well, actually, we're specifically going to focus on adults with cancer and the DMT process and how dance therapy um, plays into all of that process throughout in different areas. So um, maybe you could start by giving us a little background of the, the setting and the clients that you typically see, you know, like how long, what's the structure and how do they, how are they usually presenting when you first start to work with them? Sure, so when it comes to adult uh, cancer patients, most of the time um, I would see them in groups and they could be undergoing treatment or recently finished a treatment uh, up to like two years. And uh, I would see them most of the time in the cancer patient resource center in the hospital. So um, they, they might come in for the treatment during the morning and then join the group in the afternoon and whatnot, but those are close groups. Um, and we have from six sessions to 12 sessions altogether. Uh, depends on the location, depends on the resource and that sort of stuff. And normally I have like maybe six to 10, sometimes up to 12 in a group. Mm. When you say depending on location, are you um, hopping around different hospitals? 
Yeah, so um, I'm sharing like my experience in Hong Kong a lot of times because dance movement therapy is still relatively new. So I, apart from my private practice, I would then hop into different um, centers or different um, NGO, non-governmental organizations to, to provide services. So when, uh, with this cancer patient groups, most of the time is in different hospitals. So I would just go in and do like a two hour session once a week kind of thing. Yeah, and you say it's a closed group, so that means for the six to 12 weeks that you see them, it's just the same group of people? Yes, yes. and I find that really, really important. I mean, um, for especially for this population and the goals that we're trying to uh, achieve, because people are not used, in, I mean, in my culture, I guess, people are not really used to um, talk about feelings. I was just having a reflection the other day. I realized there aren't really that many feeling words in Cantonese, which is my native language that we use daily. So for them to, for us, not just them, actually, for everyone to get used to, let's talk about how we feel. Let's be aware of me rather than my husband, my family, my kids, my colleagues. It, it does take that close group, that safety and that warm up and that journey to, to um, move together, you know? Yeah, definitely. Um, and so we were, we were talking a little bit before we hit the record button, and that's one of the things that you said is like really comes up in doing this work with the adults is that they start to discover themselves, right? Yes. Can you, can you talk about that in terms of how that, like how they warm up to that, how that starts coming up in, um, through the dance movement therapy process and perhaps you use, you know, with drama therapy and et cetera as well. That's actually one part that I feel really excited and also really humbling with each and every single group. Um, because that seems to be a common thread when they, after however long the treatment would be, and when we do a sharing, then they would be like, oh, I realize I'm... I realize what I want. I realize my needs a bit more. I realize it's okay to be who I am. It's okay to move however I move. Um, and I guess again, because of the culture, because of you know the responsibility on these patients, a lot of times my pe people come to my group would be female in their thirties through sixties. So they would have had like um you know uh the career or the family and and a lot of times they really focus on taking care of other people mm -hmm. um instead of themselves so this is also why i personally got really excited about working with a cancer patient is you know when when days are good we don't think about ourselves <laughs> we just go and give and give and give but when our body is saying like stop you need some rest you need to like slow down that's when it's the perfect timing for us to reflect and, and process like wait i have been living my life in one way is this working for me do i want to continue living my life this way after my treatment so that that's where i come from when i work with these groups and um a lot of times i i use a lot of games so we chase around we just become like kids all over again and um at first some of them I might see them being a little hesitant, like, why am I doing that? But then again, that's the power of the group. When they see other people playing, chasing, laughing, then we all starting to get a bit more warm up to it. And through, I feel like it's through laughter and through games, through this breaking out of our normal moving patterns that create new pathways for us for new stuff and in this case would be like wait uh, it's all been giving 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 and about others the new pathway is what about me yeah oh that's so important and it's like um that experience of wait why are we doing this i worked in a psych hospital for a while as well with the, with adults and they'd be like this is so silly and it's like yeah isn't it and how does that feel and yeah. And then, and then it's like, oh my God, I never play. What is this new experience? Um, so that's, yeah, that's amazing to, to have that experience and to kind of like, even though they've gone through this tragic experience of having cancer, it's like, 
they have that opportunity to look at their lives moving forward in a totally different way. Yeah, exactly. And I find that through games and play, it, it brings them back to a quote unquote, some clear time in their life. So a lot of times then they would be like, oh, I remember that. I used to do that when I was in school. I used to play around like this. I haven't laughed like that for a long time. And I think that's, you know, before achieving any other therapeutic goals about like pain management or, you know, something a bit more deep. That in itself is very therapeutic. It's just going back to, oh, I can laugh. I'm not just a patient. I, for that two hours, I can temporarily forget that sick road Mm. and go back to, I can have fun. Yeah, right. And I I feel like this is, so I don't work with that population Mm -hmm. at all, but I work with um, women who have trauma and Mm -hmm. there is a lot of, you know, because of their circumstances, it's like, I have to get better before I can have fun and play. And I always say, like, actually pushing that aside prevents you from feeling better, prevents you from actually... Um, you know, healing your nervous system. Like it's, it's shown scientifically that we need that play and that social engagement to, um, you know, to heal further. So it's I also just, it's find like a similar for- case with my patients. A lot of times because it's, it happened in a cancer patient, you know, resource center. So they're kind of used to having groups some of them might come in and just be very verbal. They know how to tell the story and all that. But often I find a trait going back to, yeah, so don't think about it. Like, not, let's be positive. Let's not think about worries and all that. But we know that it doesn't work that way. So I know that I just said, you know, when, when we play, they can temporarily forget about it. But to me, I see that not as an escape per se, but it's actually giving them more resource okay now that we play you know that you have the strength we can talk about yes. the things that even though we try to push away we all know that it's going to come back up so might as well talk about it but if we just go dive right into it it's either too hard or i mean too much or it goes straight to the head and then it's just stuck to the cerebral so let's shake it out a little bit before mm. right? yeah And that's so important. There's such a difference between that, all right, be positive, stay positive, happy thoughts kind of thing. Um, And like forcing that versus integrating play. And like you were saying, building those new neural pathways and actually that play is something that, you know, brings a lifetime of resources if we, and if they incorporate that into their lives, it's their own they're on out. Yeah, totally. So that's a really important distinction that you made is like that play isn't just to, um, yes, it helps them push aside the worries or the fears temporarily, but it's also making a longer lasting impact. Yeah. Yeah. Really cool. Um, do you have any stories or examples that you can share that where we can kind of visualize what this might look like in certain situations? Um, I mean, obviously, each and every single one is a legend in itself, right? But knowing that we're going to talk about, I was thinking about some of my past patients, and one jumped up. So this is a mother. Um, in her late 50s, I guess. I remember for the majority of time in us in our time, she would be talking about her kids, like seeing, you know, worry about kids, job or whatever, you know. And then uh, I think it was by the past the halfway of our session. And then that time I was like, you know what, let's just explore how a body can move. But if I say that to them, everyone would just be froze up and like, what do you mean? I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> so I just, I just like, you know, me being my playful self, I was like, okay, let's set up like an obstacle course. So we have chairs and everything all over the place. First off, making a mess with this bunch of mothers is already like really hard because they are the kind that always like, okay, I need things to be knit and, you know, I'm tidying up. But because we're not at their home, right, so they have the freedom to actually make a mess. So that was already big, big fun. Um, and then this particular mother got to her last station and it was like a, a bunch of chairs stacked up and it's not like stool. So it's like chairs with the back um, support. 
She was standing on the top of the chair. And then I was like, I thought she would just like jump off from the easy side or whatever. But I looked at her, she actually paused for a second and she looked down on the floor. And then she really surprised me by jumping off from the, off, um, I don't know how to say it, off from the back support side. Oh, off the top of the back of the chair. Yeah. So instead of like jumping it, the, jumping off the easy way, she actually had to jump extra high and land extra, you know, um, another I don't know, foot <laughs> above the ground or whatever. And and everyone was shocked. <laughs> I was like. <gasps> <laughs> First off, I was glad that she was fine, but then immediately that satisfaction on her face, jumping off that way, and she made it, and she was laughing, and she was like, yeah, I did it. I, I knew I could do it. I was a little scared, but I knew I could because I used to do that when I was a child and all that. I, that moment really stuck to me is because she, at that moment, is no longer just a mother just a wife, she get back her own strength, her own sense of self, and she challenged herself, and she got over it, and she has all these control over her own body in this very uncontrollable uh, sickness, you know, in, in the midst of that. So that's one of the stories that really stuck to me, and I was like, ah, oh, wow, I'm yeah. so proud of you, and really humbling for me to witness, actually. Oh, that's so great, and and I'm like a life living a not a whole life but like her whole adult life full of responsibility where she could just like those moments of jumping off the ground is like mm -hmm. total freedom too well, how she took that risk and this she even said that it was a calculated risk I knew I could get over it and the worst thing would happen is I might be a little you know bruised up but I will be okay like she even was able to say that and have that process, I was really in awe. Mm, so awesome, so powerful. Yeah. So it did show, it sounded like she kind of connected that already to her own experience or like how do you help them verbally process their nonverbal experiences? I think um, it's not a one-off thing. So a lot of times I, try not to ask too much about what do you think that means to you until um, after like an hour and a half of playing and moving around. And then most of the time for my group, I'll give them like a sketchbook so that they can draw, they can write, they can do whatever. And that would be like a 10 minute quiet time for them to process. Mm -hmm. Wait, what did I just do? How do I feel? And then it's in moments like that that I might ask, what, what do you think it meant to you? Or what might be some of the theme that come up to you in this session so it's something that we do almost ritualistic anyways um and i see that by doing that week in week out like i said she helped her to make that connection already and i think that that's what we want yeah nice so awesome um so this is so powerful already. And I'm just wondering if there are other aspects of working with this population that feels important to bring in to this, uh, to this podcast episode, this conversation. Um, I think it's, I think it's, it's just through, moving through being with community through playing through how that space allowed them to it's kind of like you know in chow we, we, we have this thing called parallel play so it's coexisting in the same space doing the same thing almost but in their own space and i think there is really a lot of power in that um, especially in a culture that is all about community and all about other people. Um, because sometimes if, if it's one-on-one, -on -one, it might be too intimidating uh, for this bunch. And, and I've witnessed in that because we're moving together 
another common thread out, out here is, oh, I can still move. My arms actually don't hurt as much as I came in thinking. Um, I haven't been able to move my arm this high. A lot of times it could be like um, breast cancer patients and they, their arms might be swelling and whatnot, you know, with all these symptoms. Um, and after we dance, after we move, even though it's, it's just a lot of times to ask them however they want to move, <laughs> try and uh, do like a Marin chase circle kind of thing, you know, take turn leading, but adapt to however you need. And, and even just by doing that, and they, they would be like, wait, I couldn't do this before. My arms couldn't lift this up before. And now I can. And wow, I'm more than what I expected. And I think that's also another very common discovery uh, in the group. Yeah. Well, I think that also speaks to the safety that you bring to the group for them to even try something like that. Because like, even though they, they got there on their, they got there on their own, that's hard to say. Um, they felt safe enough to try something that yeah. has felt really, really difficult for a long time. So yeah. they, I think they need that safe space to even, and that, that freedom, that almost permission. And also I try not to like reinforcing the cancer part again, not to avoid it because you know, it's important to talk about, but for me, especially because it's only like eight sessions or 12 sessions, I find it, it's really important to reinforce them apart from their sick row, what else they are. And by seeing all these other personas, all these other roles that they have, um, then again, we have the strength to talk about, but cancer took away my ability to do this or cancer, whatever, you know, um, or I'm worried about relapse. But, but I feel like until then, I try to really take away, you know, oh, you're a cancer patient, so watch out what you do. And I just give them back to the you know, their autonomy and say, take care of your bodies. You know, your body is the best. And, and by giving them permission that way, it's, it's liberating for so much. I see. Yeah. Right. There's, there's not this all encompassing powerful force taking over me. I actually have control and power over mm -hmm. my body and over myself. So yeah. Awesome. Okay. Right. Well, I feel like, you know, just in this conversation itself, there's just so much gold in terms of um, just in general about dance movement therapy, you know, the process of finding ourselves again, whether that's um, after experiencing or after or going through cancer, mm -hmm. experiencing trauma or, you know, recovering from addiction, et cetera. It's like underneath all these layers of whatever has happened is, is me. Yes. And and it's so important to find. Yes. So thank you for bringing that to light today. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Anything else um, that you want to share before we wrap up? Anything about following you? I know you have a Facebook page. Oh, yes. So um, thank you. <laughs> that would be great. Um, um, if people want to know more about um, my work, I do have a Facebook page and that's called Peace of Sky, uh, Creative Arts Therapy and Counseling. And if people who want to know a bit more about DMT development in Hong Kong and maybe share a bit more of your, your experience with us as well, uh, we also have a Facebook page that is Hong Kong Dance Movement Therapy Association. And we would also love to um, interview some of the DMTs, including you already, actually. <laughs> Uh, for our community in Hong Kong as well. Sounds good. I'm down. <laughs> we'll just do the switch. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you so much, Candy. This was really, really powerful and valuable, and I'm so excited to share this with everyone. <laughs>